What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Pete's Carport and welcome back to another video featuring our 1997, well Xavier's 1997 Mercedes S600 Coupe. We left you guys off last video with diagnosing uh, the misfire issues and trying to solve all the little things going on with the engine. And I'm going to tell you, we took it for a spin after we put these monoblocks on, which check those out. I think they look really, really good. And the car drove absolutely smooth. I mean, acceleration was amazing. And there was just one small issue that we're going to look at today. And it might not be a small issue, but it's a definitely fixable issue. So we were getting this crazy noise um, during like ex heavy acceleration or heavy braking. Couldn't figure out where it was coming from. Xavier swore it was coming from the drive shaft and I told him there's a great possibility but let's drive it up and down the road. It could be something from a wheel bearing to uh, a differential. It could be all sorts of things. Uh, we had already put it up in the air and tried to move the rear wheels around and could not find anything there. So we went to the next step of just driving it and having one of us stand outside. Wish we would have caught footage of it because the noise is pretty loud. And we finally said it's probably going to be exactly what we thought it could be. And and that is the drive shaft bearing um, support just break off or the bearing goes bad. You get some cr uh, weird noises. Sometimes you get some clunking and stuff like that right in the middle. And that's where we diagnose it. So I'm going to get under the car. We're going to take off. There's a heat shield uh, blocking our view of that. And I think we can pull that down and at least take a look at it. I'm pretty sure we're just going to go ahead and change it no matter what. But I want to take a look at it so you guys can see uh, how you can diagnose this before going and spending the money and time dropping your drive shaft. Now, we're very fortunate we have this uh, drive-on lift type thing here, basically a giant ramp. And we can slide up underneath there and work on it very easily. Fortunately, at home, you're going to have to jack it up. And there's not going to be nearly as much room, but you can still do it. I actually changed it out on this uh, 500 SL using just regular jack stands. So let's get under the car and take a look at what we're doing. So guys, now that we're up underneath the car, I went ahead and removed that heat shield. There was just a few bolts holding it in. And I had to remove the O2 sensor to pull that heat shield over without removing the exhaust. And obviously, we don't want to do that just for inspection. So strangely enough, this center support looks really, really good. So this is the rubber that goes around the bearing and this kind of supports the drive shaft up. And on my 500 SL, this was all tore up and all I had was this metal frame right here and the rubber boot was completely uh, driven down there. So mine was completely shot and the drive shaft was bouncing up and down on my vehicle creating not only noise, but I could feel it in the center of the car. This one, we didn't feel anything, so I knew it wasn't as bad as my other one, but I could hear it from the center. So we figured it's probably the boot that was tore off, just not as bad, but this looks really good. So the next thing you'd want to do is the bearing could still be completely shot, even though the boot is good. So the next thing you'd want to do is if you're at home, jack it up, put it on jack stands, uh, on your jack stand supports, put it in neutral, and then you want to go ahead and spin the drive shaft manually or you can turn one of the tires. It's definitely best to have a second person and also caution, caution, caution. Make sure you have a lot of support and it's held up very well. You do not want this car falling on you. And then you should be able to turn it and hear if the bearing is making any noise. Right now I can't do that up here and I was kind of hoping to. So what I want to do is go ahead and pack this with some grease and then drive it up and down the road. See if that could help. I don't know if it can. I don't know if it can do anything. But I, I'm wondering maybe it just ran dry of grease. Somebody didn't pack it with grease. And see if I can get some grease up in there. Some bearing grease. And it could resolve it. I don't know. Um, other than that, we're probably just going to change out the bearing and the support. Just because we have to take everything down. Uh, and we're going to test it on the ground. So we'll probably test it on the ground in this episode. And then the next episode, we will swap it out unless it goes completely away. So let's test that out. Let's go ahead and pack it with some grease, clean it up, and drive it around a little. So this is the bearing grease that I use. I use this on the 500 SL2. Works great. Uh, you can use any type of bearing grease. But I went ahead and packed a whole bunch up into there. One thing that I just realized is that it doesn't have the boot on you. So I'm thinking there's a possibility. I believe the boot comes on there from the factory, but I could be wrong. Uh, but they do sell a boot that comes with this that goes over that to keep the grease from drying out. So there's a possibility that somebody changed this out, didn't add the boot, didn't add the grease, and we're just getting some noise. So let's check it out. That would be really, really awesome if that's just the case. Well, guys, it seems like it's driving amazing. Unbelievable, guys. I think the noise is gone. So there is a possibility that this bearing 
is uh, either shot or about to go, but packing with grease, maybe we can get some life out of it. Any of you guys who have ever done that, let me know, because maybe uh, it just never got greased. But I'm about to do a pull for you guys once I come out of this. I got a guy up there a little bit, but let's... I mean, unreal how fast this car is for a car from the 90s. I mean, it's unbelievable. Smooth, fast. I mean, it's it's a joy to drive. And it is so, so smooth right now with these new tires on here, guys. This is pure luxury. This is what this car should be. Smooth acceleration, fast. This is just half throttle right here. The transmission just drives amazing. So unbelievable. I'm gonna get back. I'll kind of go over some things. Hopefully I'll drive it around a little bit more, but I've already went about four miles with no issues. So I think we solved it, guys. This car might be fully running right now. All right, guys, so I just got back from like a 10 mile drive around in this thing and not a single noise. So I don't know, maybe we fixed it, maybe we didn't. What I love about this channel is you guys are always filling me in, so I would love to hear from you guys in the comments if you've ever experienced this. Maybe you've changed out your uh, drive shaft center bearing and uh, forgot to grease it. Maybe like a couple hundred miles later, you realize, hey, I'm getting a noise, and maybe you packed it with grease. I don't know. I don't know if anybody's ever done that before or if this is a thing, but I feel like this just resolved it. Let's get back up underneath here and take a look at it, because. To me, this looks a lot newer. I mean, I don't think with 128,000 miles that, that the rubber piece would be in that good a shape. In my experience with my 500 SL, it had about 134,000 miles and the thing was torn to shreds. But, you know, these cars were built to last, so I don't know, maybe it, it would look like this at 128,000 miles. Let me know in the comments, guys. Did I resolve this? And the last thing is, if this thing drives good uh, on more test drives, we're gonna go ahead and get a boot slice it, put it up in there, and maybe splice it together with some zip ties or something. Let me know what you guys think if you've done that before. Maybe you put it back up without the boot and you had to slide one in. Uh, we wanna make sure if it is uh, the bearing that we keep it grease. So that is one thing we want to make sure and eventually obviously we'll change it out if we need to. So this could save us a lot of time and money and you know headaches if it's not the bearing or if it is that was the bearing and we were able to resolve it. Once again guys, I know you love this car and I enjoy driving it. This thing is a blast. I cannot believe how smooth and fast this car is for a 90s car. You guys have an awesome day, a blessed week. My name's Pete, this is Pete's Carport and I'll catch you on the next video.